This episode is brought to you by Mood. Devin, exciting news. I finally figured out what we're going to do for 420. Ooh, what you got? What you got, man? We got all these Mood products, right? Mm-hmm. I told you I got that new shipment. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I like to enjoy myself, especially on 420, right? Mm-hmm. 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 We're going to binge watch Ned's Declassified. Okay. All right, I all like right. that. But here's the thing. Every time Ned gives a tip, we take a Mood edible. I give like 20 tips an episode. That's a lot of tips. <laughs> perfect! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Achieve the perfect high for you with Mood's federally legal flower, gummies, vapes, and more. There are different strains for specific moods. Euphoric to energetic, creative to chill. Celebrate 420 the way you want to with Mood. Get 20% off your first order plus a free THCA pre-roll at hellomood.com with special promo code NEDS. That's hellomood.com code NEDS. Yeah. We're on a podcast. Woo! Special podcast. Hello, listeners, watchers. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you also follow us on Spotify and Apple. In the studio today, we have a very special guest. Woo! The one and only Claire Sawyer. Future, future lawyer, lawyer. Brooke Marie, Marie Bridges. Bridges. Hello, hello. Hey, Hi, thank Brooke. You. She Hi. has been on world tour every time we've tried to get her on it's the been podcast. So hard. Yeah, we tried uh, all last previously. year. Yeah. But I feel like the whole year we've done the podcast, she we've been yeah. We, yeah. And we, we've to always get you. anticipated you being here via Zoom. Right. Like we, yeah. we showed up and said, Oh yeah, it's Brooke's episode today. It's gonna be great. And it just never the Wi-Fi went, went down. Went, I was yeah. like, yeah. are they lying? They don't want me they, to be are there. They're lying. So bad. <laughs> Dude, because I, I had reached out to her on what was it, TikTok? First of all, yeah, finding TikTok. you was a, a, little, a little bit tough. But yeah. um then I'm like, she thinks that I'm just making this stuff yeah, I was up. Like, like I'm <laughs> He's like, is he doing a cruel joke? I was like, oh. I know my character was kind of boring, but like, oh. I'm not that boring. <laughs> like so. I'm a real cool It'll person. Fun, I swear. <gasps> we know oh. it was. First of all, Claire Sawyer, future lawyer, was not boring. Okay. No, yeah. I mean, Great bit throughout the entire series. It's so funny. Super solid bit. It was, it was decent. Mm-hmm. I felt a little bored though, which oh, may, yep. may be news to people. Sure. I'm sorry if I'm breaking anybody's heart. No, go, yeah, but go. I was so jealous that everybody got to be funny and silly, oh. and I had to be like, an adult. Right. You know? Oh. That's I why it was like, funny. No, that makes sense. That was funny, you know? though, but for you, not funny. I it never wasn't thought of that. I know. I didn't know. Yeah. 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 Situational humor, but you right. weren't the butt of it. Right. Yeah, and I you didn't get to do anything things. zany. You're a lo- you're the lawyer. Right. That's what's funny. Is right. You're yeah. a kid who's acting like an adult. Right. Mm. Which for me was like, man, this sucks. You got Damn. to get tossed. You got to get tossed in a backpack in that one episode. That was fun. That was That's great. true. Kendra, that was yeah. fun. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm gonna shoot the backpack true. off that boy. Yeah. yeah. Wait. So were you really zany? I'm. I'm pretty sure I took you at that at at, at your lawyer's costume. Exactly. Like you, you. You were. I was. Silly. Yeah. I was. I you were really, quiet. Yeah. A little bit quiet uh, because I was depressed. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, what, in, what, re, re, what? Depressed in about the situation. Real life. In, like, in, like just in about general, life, in just on, real life. Oh, yeah, that not was just a rough. That was a tough time for me as a kid. Wow. I was really generally a happy-go-lucky kid, <laughs> but I was just going through, you know, anxiety. I dealt with depression. I just dealt with all this stuff. I would go to school. People would think I was, you know, a bitch because I was an actress that I was better than everybody else. But in reality, I was just like a kid. You know, yeah. I just wanted to be a normal kid. And yeah. so then I would like be at home and be, you know, struggling with things, and then go on set and then be like. Oh, you got to be more boxed in, you know, to this little mm. mold. And mm. so, yeah, I just, I was quiet probably because I was just insecure and wow. anxious. And, and you, you, you come from an actor family too, yeah. like a lineage. So that I've always wondered how that must be. Like I'm from rural Mississippi and just mm. flew out. Right, you're right. from Atlanta. You're from uh, Nebraska, <laughs> the corn. <laughs> She's like, how dare you forget where I'm from? But you're from... So, you're here, anyway. right? <laughs> but for you, your your uncle was um, Todd Bridges. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I, remember, I was excited yeah, yeah. when I was like, "Oh, she's gonna be all oh, this is cool." Ooh, she yes. knows Gary Coleman. This is gonna be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was hard. It was definitely like the pressure was on mm-hmm. a little bit more, and it was just like expected of you to like want to be an actor, and that that's your future. Mm-hmm. That's the thing you're gonna pursue. Period. You know, like yeah. I did my first acting job when I was six months old. Oh, mm-hmm. holy shit! Like a commercial with my dad and my sister. And wow. so after, you know, I was born, it's like, okay, Brooke's an actor. That's what mm-hmm. she's doing. And I was like, right. okay, you know, and mm-hmm. at first I was like, it was great and good. And, and I don't know if you all experienced this because, you know, maybe you didn't get into it as early. But one thing I remember really big coming up 
on the time that I was on Neds was like this feeling of being accepted because I was playing other characters or playing roles, mm -hmm. not necessarily being accepted because of who mm -hmm. I am as mm -hmm. a person, and especially from your family, you know, because it's like they're happy when I book jobs. Mm -hmm. Are they happy just because they love me? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so like that was a hard, a hard wow. experience for sure. Wow. And that's, yeah. that's yeah. through all the years from six. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. always been a thought for you. Six months. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's a wow. weird, that's a weird thing with the, any acting but kid acting is then totally. being loved for your performance and right. not just you fucking being. Yeah. Like, for me, like Ned was so close to who I was. Mm. So the line was blurred in terms of like what I was being celebrated for. But there was definitely times when like Ned's was was uh, kind of new and airing where like some people in my family, it just got a little weird. It was it was all positive and love and they were celebrating me, but all of a sudden it was like about the fact that I'm an actor on TV mm. and not that I'm your fucking family. Yeah, right, and right. That, mm. that definitely got weird some holidays back home where I was like, oh, this feels different. God, yeah. Yeah, this does not feel like the same love. This is right. a different love and a weirder love and now like an abstracted love as if I'm more than the fucking kid you've known totally. your whole fucking life. Totally. And even yeah. if they aren't outwardly projecting that, just the fact that uh, children in the industry do have to have that option available to them that maybe I'm loved for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. or maybe it's not authentic. Did yeah. you guys yeah. ever run into like a weird feeling of like competition within your family, whether it be like even aunts, uncles, like even like mm. mom type of the deal, but just that, I don't know, not not even that you wanted to be an actor, but just the attention and the kind of the love that you get. I was, I, I don't know, there were just some strange instances in my family where I was like, do you want me to succeed? Or mm, like, yeah. mm, you know what I mean? Totally. Or are you trying to trump me? We're not even in the same lane. And mm -hmm. in a respect, you know what I mean? Right, like we're right. not, we're comparing apples and oranges here, but there was like a strange tension there. Did mm, it, has anybody totally. else ever experienced what, that? What, like someone wa Absolutely. wanting you to fail from your family or... I don't know if you would say like, oh, they're rooting for me to fail, but they certainly are looking for the cracks in the foundation. Yeah. I, I get what you're saying. I like mean, trying yeah. to tear down the fact that what you were doing requires a ton of attention yep. and whatever, and whether they're they're not pursuing that at right. all, but just like, but right. just like but little, like little yeah. digs yeah. at you. Yeah. 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 yeah, I definitely experienced that too. And it got really hard with my sister too, because Ooh. back when I, we were only a year apart. So back when we were acting, it was like me, my sister, Penny, uh, oh, I Chelsea, remember Penny, Paige, yeah. like, Whoa. all these, like we were the ones, Penny, oh, we were the ones who were like booking things. Wow. And so she, you know, like she and I, we just had this like already as two girls growing up the same age, this like inherent competition and then add the layer of like what, who's booking what, Damn. when we're always auditioning for the same thing, mm. added another layer. Mm. And I do, other family members did also notice sometimes just like, oh, are you sure you want to do, mm. you know, like, oh, well that's cool yeah. you know like you can just sense this like seething Weird underneath like anger what is or something yeah, yeah. or like yeah. you want to be you know you want to make money yeah on tv <laughs> do we you know, like, yeah why yeah. not yeah. i want to wear cute clothes and like yeah. go out to eat at sushi restaurants that cost a lot of money you know like, <laughs> why not? yes i do want that is. i absolutely like, I'll take want your that. ass out you know if you're nice to me but yeah, yeah. yeah. like that yeah, no. right, right yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I didn't I didn't have competition in my not not like that, but I I mean I definitely ruined my sister's life. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. She no. didn't want to be an actress, but like <laughs> the attention and just the energy that was required for me to yeah. be who I am and succeed in what we were doing. Like, yeah. you know, my mom's life revolved around she worked you know, none of us as kids do it ourselves. Our parents have right. to, totally. it's a big lift for them. So, yeah. I mean, fuck, I'm from Georgia too. Like for a long time, my sister was staying in Georgia with my dad and my mom yeah. was coming out here for months at a time wow. with me doing the acting thing. Like there wasn't a competition in terms of my sister wanting to act, but for sure she had resentment towards me for a time. We we worked it out like later in our lives, but like, she, and she she's such a fucking sweetie pie. She knew the whole time, like, I love you and I support you and I want you to succeed, but it just sucks that like mom My and mommy? the family's yeah. attention, like it just sucks that everyone fucking yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. is That's centered true. around you. And right. I'm like, 
I, yeah, yeah, Aww. yeah. yeah. My, that does sound. I went yes. to college at the time when when we were doing Neds, but also we moved the whole family from Mississippi. Mm, uh, my, my brother came out. You know, it was for his career initially, but my sister she was making this huge transition to uh, go to Baylor for college. So that was a, a big thing for her that the she had no anchor to the family mm. near the South. Yeah, that yeah. moved away, yeah. but not not competition not with her. Right, but, right. Still, but still, yeah. that was something that was tough. Okay, so you're you're feeling a little bit anxious on set. Like, what what, what were like the good times like did you like the school room like d d give me a full fuller version of your experience on Nets. yeah I felt I wasn't sure if people liked me on it to be honest mm. I was like worried sometimes because I felt like a little weirdo do you not rem remember like I spent I spent most of my time with hair and makeup playing with their teacup poodles Ah, well, those teacup poodles were adorable. Yeah, the majority whoa, of the yo, time I spent whoa, on set was what like, was the, there was whoa. a young lady what was the woman you you kind of <laughs> resemble her a little bit? Oh, um, Vanessa, uh, Vanessa. Vanessa. Do you remember? Vanessa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. totally, Vanessa. Yeah. <gasps> so I was just I like hiding in the makeup room, playing you with the puppies. With you know, because I thought it was because you were cooler than us, though. <laughs> I, mean, I honestly Aww. thought that you didn't like I I, so I might sweet. have thought you were a tiny bit standoffish, but I think I must have been too because I don't remember being like overly warm. Like yeah, I remember yeah. greeting, but I was not overly warm I, to I anybody. You didn't like me really that much. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Does this retroactive apology like help yes. your younger? <laughs> In any way. I hope yes. so. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. You guys really though, I was not as nice a person as I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> I you mean also you were bit, you you had a lot of lines to learn too, but you were also always hyper focused on what was happening in your world. Uh, yes, but, which but makes let me sense. not. Yes, but a little self makes sense. self absorbed. No, which yeah, and I think sometimes we all probably were because right. I also was. You know, mm -hmm. so I probably came across standoffish because in my little head I'm like, what the heck? you know, who am I? What, what am I doing here? You know, I'm yeah. just like on set doing my thing, but I wasn't also overly yep. warm and like really wanting to try and hang out with people because I was just scared yeah. you know but i was like focused on my own little avenue I, too I, yeah i always felt cool with you and yeah. enjoyed our yeah, scenes together and always thought you're cute and like had like a little i i never thought you're standoff i always thought like oh she's so cute like i always loved oh, working with i had you. a little yeah. crush on you yeah too. i had a little, oh, I had a little crush. Oh. that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying yo i had a little crush there was no oh. there was no standoffishness i was like she's so funny oh, internet. <laughs> this reminds that's me of a moment <laughs> <laughs> the internet my space time now because thinking about this right I got in a couple people's inboxes. This was was this my space time? Wait, you. My where space? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you about to take it? Was, it was you or Penny. I got my heart just just crushed. Momentary crushed because oh. it was happening because I was hitting everybody oh. up. You reached out oh, to me. Like, hey, I think you're cute. I think it was you, bro. It was now me? I think about it. And she was like, oh, uh, <laughs> well, I was actually kind of interested in Devin. Oh. No, no, she. Ah! Remember that at all? Oh, broken. <laughs> no, I, you know, and then I was like, oh yeah, she's, uh, you know, she, she's like, you know, half, half black, you know, but you're, you're an African American woman. I'm black. I was yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, yeah, this is my ticket. <laughs> you know? And then she's like, uh, actually, the white guy. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, and that kicked off everything. I'm like, these people are terrible. <laughs> They're destroying our community. <laughs> No. Yeah, oh my rock. god! They just gave me a it just a flashback. I think it was yeah. It had to have been you. Oh it couldn't have been gosh. Penny. Wait, Penny's I, your older sister. She's my older yeah, sister. No, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. This episode is brought to you by Mood. Dev. Lindsay. Hi. Hi. How's it going? It's, it's going. What are you doing today? I don't know. I was, I was thinking maybe you and I could get in the mood. You want to get in the mood? I kind of do. Okay, I could get in the mood. You could get in the mood? I could get in the mood. Me too. Let's get in the mood. Let's get in the mood then. <laughs> ah, it is so great to see you guys in an awesome mood. And for all the viewers at home, you can be in a great mood too with Mood's federally legal THC. We got pre-rolls, we got vapes, and more. Especially these gummies these guys just took. Uh, yeah, get in a good mood. You only live once, guys. <laughs> Celebrate 420 exactly how you want to with mood. Get a 20% discount on your first order and a free THCA pre-roll at hellomood.com, promo code NEDS. That's hellomood.com. Code NEDS.
Yeah. Oh, Dang. you reached out to Penny too, but she's just the one who got back to you. Respond, yeah. <laughs> Screw you, bro. Penny, re- Penny. <laughs> hey, Penny, I've been thinking <laughs> the <laughs> same, <laughs> the same <laughs> message. Oh, oh, wow, damn, oh, damn, 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 Daniel. Throwback. Nice little revelation for the viewers. This is, like uh, yeah, yeah. All right, back, back, back wow. to you. Go, going straight back to you. Um, so you got through Ned's. Love that. What, what happened after that? So after oh. Ned's, I still was acting a little bit. I was trying to quit, to be honest. I was telling my parents, like, I don't want to do it anymore. Like, one thing for some reason that really got to me was having to do makeup picture day at school. I don't know why. I was always on set, so I always missed picture day, and I hated standing in that line. So I was like, <laughs> I just I don't know why that stuck out to me. But it's like it seems like such a normal thing that kids get to do that I didn't get to do. Uh, mm. And so I was just like, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. So I tried to quit, mm. and my my dad mostly was like, no. And mm. so I stuck with it for a little while. I was on a show with Blair Underwood called LAX for like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a little bit. Got canceled. Oh, nice. Um, but it, that was fun. I enjoyed that because I got to play a rebellious teenager, which is exactly how I felt. Oh. And so I stuck with it for a little while. Then I stopped doing TV and film entirely and just did commercial because that's where the money's at, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I made money. And then I went up to Northern California and worked on a farm for three months. Wow. And okay. got the green thumb. Got uh-huh. scared, though, and ran back to LA like, I can't leave my life as an actor. Um, Damn, but you you did a three month hiatus, yeah. and still had that pull to come back. Yeah, it was crazy, and I think too, like while I was there, I was making it was getting residual checks, and like I was rich at the time, right. you know, like, right. and I was like, I, I can't really leave that money behind for right. this like country <laughs> life, you know. <laughs> um, so I went back, but then like something kept calling me, like you got to get away from the city, you know, like I was like forty five pounds lighter than I am right now. I was so just hyper focused on my appearance on like what people thought about me. Mm. And so something just kept pulling me to like nature, Mm. you know? And it's weird because I didn't grow up in a family that did nature at all. Like, Mm. you know, we went camping where you could pull your car straight up to the campsite. Like we weren't, didn't do that. Mm -hmm. But something was just like, you gotta get out. You know, there was like a voice. Um, And my mom is actually from the Berkshires in Western Mass. So she moved out there and was like, saw me all skinny and like emaciated and looking crazy. And was mm. like, come out here. You know, it's really calm. It's beautiful. You'll meet new people. You can just try it for a little while. If you don't like it, go back to LA. And so I moved in 2017 and never looked back. Oh. And now I, you know, live on a farm. Well, we just moved off the farm, but I was living on a farm for a couple of years, Soul Fire Farm, which is a nonprofit farm dedicated to ending racism in the food system. Yeah. Oh, right. which great. Is Say that again. Amazing. Say it again. What is it? Soul, Soul Fire. Fire Farm. Soul Fire Farm. Yep. Fire in farm. Grafton, New York. And now I grow things and raise babies and did did you meet your husband out there? I met my husband at the farm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's dope. You yeah. don't need you don't need uh whatever the farmers dating app is. You just yeah, need to farmers, be only. farmers only. Farmers, farmers only. Yeah, farmers, farmers only. Farmers only. Right. But you don't need that. You just need to be I wonder on the what farm. kind of yeah, credentials yeah. you gotta give to like get onto that site. To prove that you're a farmer. Here's my seed expenses. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, I grew a eucalyptus plant. <laughs> um, That's hard to grow. Wow. Okay, you say babies. Um, babies. How, I have two many? babies. Oh. I have my two and a half year old named Lyris. Mm, who, what does that mean? Awesome name. Lyris means, well, it's a family name. My husband's great aunt's name. Oh. Um, and how are you he, spelling that? L-Y- L-Y-R-I-S. Yeah, oh, she like is wow. me. Uh-huh. Is little, which is crazy. Oh my goodness. She's so amazing. But damn, like I got my work cut out for me. My mom was always like, you're going to get yours back. You know, like just wait. what you did to me. And I'm like, oh, no. my daughter's, she's something else. Oh she my me every gosh. Day. Um, so I'm working on my rage. Oh my hey, God. Hey. Okay. Which is hard. Uh, and then I have a sweet, little angel son named Kamari James, oh, who nice, just turned a year old. Wow. Aww. He's the sweetest That's little guy. Amazing. Nice. Loves me so much. Dude, Aww. I, I, I kind of am shocked and love that your story is like, it, it's unique and like you didn't want to, it's so rare that parents force their children <laughs> To act and stay in it. Like mm. that you oh, yeah. were trying, that you never, wanted to stay like something in you was always kind of steering you out yeah and the money obviously will keep you back in but also like your family pressure was to stay Stay. an actress yeah and i think that's just because you know that was the family business right you know my parents like my dad me and him are tight like you know i don't have any resentment at all i know he was just trying to do what he thought was best for me at the time um 
but yeah, it was a it was a hard pressure because I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore, you know, and it that to me would have been a pretty simple like, okay then. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but yeah. it just wasn't. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't. I think bad. it's too hard of a pursuit. It's too unstable. It's too hard on the emotions if you don't absolutely want to do it. Yeah. Exactly. It's too pain. Like exactly. Go to a farm. Go do anything else. Yeah. If yeah. if you don't have that like burning need right. to do it. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I moved back to Mississippi. I didn't, you know, just straight up say I'm gonna be a farmer now. Um, but, <laughs> but sometimes you do need the uh, the breaks. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? No, no, no. But honestly, I do consider sometimes going back and you know yeah. getting my right? great you thumb up. You should do it a little. It's so healing. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, can I, I ask um, what? So what were your what was your journey with anxiety and depression after mm. Ned's and through your so adult life? yeah that's. Yeah, it, came, it really came to a head after I moved, to be honest, because prior to leaving, you know, I had been in therapy, I've been doing all that. And so I thought I was like healed. I'm like, I'm perfect and good. Mm. And now I'm going to move. But it's like whenever you move, you know, all new things come up. And, you know, L.A. is so fast paced like you can easily kind of just bypass. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I'm anxious. Fuck this. I'm going out. You know, I'm going to go get some drinks with some friends. Yeah. And like you never have to actually like focus. Deal with it, yeah. um, but I moved out there in October. So I was getting ready to go into my first winter. I lived alone. Holy shit. I had no friends yet. I had no job yet. I And so I just kind of like walked into my, what is it? The dark night of the soul. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, you know, like I like felt like I just kind of devolved into a puddle of just mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, just all the things, the fear of abandonment, just the you know, not being good enough, the fear of rejection, like all these things just started coming up and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. Like I really, it really, <laughs> yeah. you know, felt like I was gonna die. So I checked myself into an inpatient there you go. place. There you go. Residential, you so it's right. a little different. Right. Yeah. It's like you live in a house with a bunch of other people, mm -hmm. girls, other women, and you like learn about how to re, you know, rewire mm -hmm. your brain. And honestly, like those two, I spent two weeks there and they were like the best thing that ever yeah. happened to me. You know, so like that was in 20, 18 and so I learned like you know mm. mindfulness and like mm -hmm. how do I get out of my head and focus on what's happening because I just feel like you know so much fear that we have is focused on things that either happened in the past or might happen in the future mm -hmm. it's not actually what's mm -hmm. happening in the present so you know how do I just refocus on the present and honestly farming and growing stuff was a big part of that healing for me because oh, wow. you know you got to be mindful when you're like tending to plants and you're hearing the birds and you're looking at the sun. And so just mm. that practice of like gratitude and mm. mindfulness in, in nature has just been a life changer. Wow, man. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. One of my favorite like kind of lessons from nature is growing something is a slow process. Mm. Like it takes consistent whatever nutrients the right balance of things but it's just slow you can't rush it you can't rush a tree growing you can't rush mm -hmm. a plant growing but you could pull it out in a fucking second mm. like so destruction is a very quick process and growing something lasting mm. that's healthy is a slow process over time that you have to keep showing up Absolutely. to and it's just like one of my favorite reflections from nature that i'm sure working on a farm you're just Absolutely. in daily absolutely the tending you know mm. if you really want to get something fruitful and sustainable, yeah, it's a slow, mm -hmm. tender, caring, mm. you know, process. You have mm. to troubleshoot, you have to, you know, it just, the mindfulness aspect for me just really comes to the forefront. What yeah. is your favorite crop or <gasps> plant to grow? Uh, my, <laughs> my favorites are generally perennial herbs, which mm -hmm. perennial means they come back every year. So oh, I thought we were them. talking perennium. No, <laughs> no, perennial. <laughs> Good Lord. You don't, perineum? Yeah. yeah. yeah perineum. I am, I'm very familiar hey, with the it? perineum. Hey, tomato, I tomato. Kids, yeah. So, uh, no. Uterus, <laughs> uterus. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> also very uterus, familiar with the uterus. uterus you know? hey. um, yeah, my uterus <laughs> is strong and great. Um, push two kids out, so that. Oh. Um, yeah, I love perennial herbs because you plant them and then they always come back in the spring first. So, mm -hmm. you know, you might be getting ready to seed new things, but the perennials are there already. So it's like the first green you see. Favorite perennial? My favorite perennial is lemon balm. Ooh. Lemon balm. Ooh. Lemon balm is so amazing. It's actually the first herb that I ever saw grow from the ground when I was in Northern California. And I was like, 
what the fuck? You know, I was like, what is that? Like, yeah. what is that? Why does it smell so good? Right. Mm. Because it smells so fragrant. They're like, that's lemon balm. And I'm like, what the fuck is lemon balm? <gasps> you know? And it was just like this amazing experience of like just being in relationship to this plant, making like hydrosols that you can spritz on your skin and making body butter that you can rub on your body. Oh. That's lemon balm's also really healing. It's really good for like, irritation and rashes can, can you tell us about this what is this we have here? and also calendula is one of my favorite which is in here calendula calendula Cal oh calendula wait that's the one i was like Cal calendula calendula, yeah, calendula. <laughs> calendula. Um, so these are some body butters that i made that i want to gift to you oh nope you get the prettier label these oh, oh. give her the prettier yay. label oh. yay oh so looks botanical calendula. yo like jojoba. This, this is my best seller. So this is some calendula, jojoba, and shea okay, shea butter. So Soothing simplicity. Oh my yep. gosh, I'm gonna. Mm. It's really good for dry skin, which we all got uh, around here. Yeah, oh, she's looking at us like, yeah, put them on now. <laughs> <laughs> you need no, this, this, this is LA water, oh, man. Oh my god, hard water. Hard water. Ooh, We're true. all dry. Could this be any creamier? Oh, that's creamy. Isn't um, amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, <laughs> friends at home, if you want to check out uh, oh Brooks, amazing. Uh, products go to brooksbotanicals.co. Oh, Brooks Brooks yeah, this is the creamiest thing I've ever felt. Isn't oh, my amazing? like, God. right? <laughs> like, you you open these things, you expect like oh my a little bit drier, <laughs> dude. It's <laughs> actual <laughs> this butter, actually feels fucking incredible. dude. It's actual <laughs> butter. People like and it will doesn't die seem greasy. For this. Yeah, no, like, this is seem, no, it's it's a it's, this is high goes on, it goes, Yeah, dude. after your shower, damp skin, put it on there. Oh, it'll just lock in all that moisture. Oh, we locked in, this and it smells beautiful. good. It, it smells, smells like chocolate. So good. It really does because it it's does. a cocoa butter. Yeah. This is. This is so beautiful. exciting. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. You just upgraded me. My, my, my girl will probably use more than, yeah. that, than I will. But oh, for sure. That's getting sweet. Have, have getting sweet. Sweet. Rub it on you, Dan. Ooh. Yeah. I was, okay, yeah. it works as a massage oil, too. Hey. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It could work. Uh -huh. it could work. It could work. I end up doing more massaging. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's also going to be a good thing, right? Um, <laughs> right? That's a good thing. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Will you tell me? So off, off. Before we started rolling a little bit, you told me about like your daughter only having references for farmers being mm. black women. Will you yeah. tell yeah. me yeah. about <laughs> being a black woman farmer? Like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. so Soulfire Farm was founded by <laughs> Leah Peniman, who is a beautiful black woman Leah. farmer. Um, and so my daughter, you know, and then I started farming with Leah. And so when my daughter was born, you know, well, first of all, when I was pregnant with her, I was planting seeds while I was growing this baby in my belly, oh. which was like a pretty amazing oh. experience. Oh, wow. Yeah, it felt really Meta. like spiritual in this crazy way. Wow. Um, but so all the women and also the farm is dedicated to like training up black farmers. Mm -hmm. So everybody who comes to the programs are people of color. Hell yeah. yeah. A lot of black people. Yeah. So, you know, when she was little and we would walk around the farm during programming, she would just see a bunch of black people and a bunch of black women. She's like, mommy's a farmer. And so when she sees, sings Old MacDonald, you know, she's like, oh, MacDonald had a farm. And on her farm, and she like point, uh, points yeah, it like that too. Right. And she's like, on her farm. I'm like, that's right. You know? um, <laughs> exactly. But uh, right. I love that. <laughs> being a black woman farmer is interesting because black farmers in general in the United yeah. States are only like, one percent of farmers, which, yeah. which right. is wild. Like, yeah. and you know that was traditionally like you know you think of slavery days yeah, that, yeah. that we were working with our hands in the fields, and my family comes from that as well. Even prior to sharecropping, but right, it's you know there have been certain subsidies that were removed from African American farmers, and they were not able yeah. to yeah. sustain that growth. Like that would have been our major, exactly. uh, you know. Yeah, like industry. loans. Industry, yeah. Like it's hard to get loans for yeah. farming as a black person. Like there's there are tons. Like the Homesteading Act was yeah. like excluded black people from it entirely. So they yeah. were giving away land, but not just not to black people. Yep. So mm -hmm. it's it's amazing because I believe you know it shows a new wave that's coming and a new yeah. opportunity for my daughter if she ever desired to do that. Mm -hmm. And then too, like you know, starting this little business is like an interesting new way to be a farmer too you know because i think people when they think of farming they think like oh i just have to plant vegetables and mm -hmm. i have to sell vegetables mm -hmm. and it's it like out, yeah. yeah but no like you can grow amazing nourishing herbs and like teach people about herbalism and teach people about how to care for themselves and so that's you know i think important too to like yeah. show young people the difference different things different avenues they can take if they do because yeah that's huge like on top of like like i mean you're refining a product from it as well versus just shipping it out to other right, people and right. them do it that's really cool i love that you do this it's and it's honestly like i love it like i feel like i'm sure we've all had things over the years like i mean i because i haven't focused so much on acting i've done a lot of things like i was mm -hmm. a preschool teacher and i was 
You what? know, yeah, I did a bunch of randoms. So I can't even oh. remember them right now, but um, a lot of stuff. And I feel like this is the first thing where I'm like, I love this, and I think I'm gonna love it forever. Oh, you know, that's so, so it feels really man. nice. It feels really oh, nice. and it seems so much more fulfilling than some of these things that are like more rigid and like conceptual. It's like. I know I'm going to make this thing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be magical. And I can come out here and continually do it and feel fulfilled mm -hmm. about it. Well, like, and and mm -hmm. you're connecting to the natural world and the yeah. natural processes Purposeful. of life to do it. You're with the seasons. You're mm -hmm. with the sun. You're mm -hmm. with the dirt. Mm -hmm. Like th that's It's so tangible, visceral, yeah. like spiritual, where we're just uh, telling fart jokes on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which yeah. is also important, and making ourselves hey. cry in front of the camera. <laughs> Don't <Wow>. patronize us. <laughs> yeah, which is also important. Which is also important. <laughs> I think. I think a re-education in the self-care system yeah. is so vital and necessary. Yeah, and like I feel like that's kind of what you're ushering forth. Like it's been so monetized, and like we think mm. that these yeah. chemicals are self-care. Mm. These mm. little face masks that mm. you buy, mm -hmm. and it's like they think self-care is like cute and it rarely is that yeah, cute, yeah, yeah. you know? It's like in the dirt and this and that, it's cute like in a in a different definition, but yeah, mm. absolutely. I love that. And Yeah, and that's the thing too, is like, cause this year I'm gonna start doing like programming for people to teach them how to grow their own stuff and make their own stuff. And I feel like that is also what you don't get when you buy a cream at your, you know, whatever. Sure. Like you're not getting taught how to actually care for yourself right. you know, or the land right. or anything. Right. You're just being told your skin is imperfect. You need to put this, fucking cream on right so you have poreless skin which is bullshit because mm -hmm. we have pores that's um, how the skin beats. <laughs> and so like that's the thing too is like you know if people put these things on their face it might not give them the exact glow that like the thing i can't pronounce you know uh -huh. is gonna do to you yeah, what, yeah, right yeah. with all yeah. the chemicals but this is gonna be sustainable for yourself this is gonna be sustainable it's not gonna mess up your mm -hmm. hormones it's gonna be sustainable for our planet and yeah. it's gonna teach you how to be like real yeah. you know and so that was hard for me too because coming from la you know, like yeah. the first month that I was there, I didn't even look at myself in the mirror because I was like, I got to just get away from this. I threw out so many clothes that now I sort of regret. <laughs> but I was like, I'm changing my life. I went to moment. Goodwill. Yeah. I bought overalls. And ah. like, you know, I was like, I'm doing the farming thing. Um, and I think that, you know, whether you do that literally or metaphorically, like it's important to kind of toss out this ideal that isn't really real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And it, it's definitely super emphasized in LA. Like yeah. that is a, Part of this is yeah, just, it's just super awareness on our image and the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, Dude, a lot, hard. a lot of my crises as a uh, a young boy, especially going into like teenage years, um, trying to make that transition, was tied to like my Brooke rejecting you. Oh well, th that hey, of course that that, that, that was that'll, that'll set anybody I'm back. So sorry. Everything else will <laughs> set anybody back. Okay. <laughs> but like I, I recall my my dad, you know, trying to you know, hey man, you you know, you're you're becoming an adult. You gotta make sure your hair is so perfect, mm, and yeah. you gotta look into these. beautiful Beauty things, and I'm like, bro, dad, that's just not something I care about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I only want to be a, I hate to say it, like a dusty guy running around <laughs> rough and tumble playing football. But I was like, that's all, that's the way my brain's wired, and I don't feel like I fit in mm -hmm. trying for this beauty stuff. I was I like, I'm not, I'm not one of those leading sexy guys. Like, Daniel, you know, we're like, just well, trying to make it so your hands don't crack when you move. Them, <laughs> that, you know that's I mean? all. Like, put, put on the lotion, Daniel. <laughs> just, I'm trying to make it so put you it feel like you can move in your skin suit. You know what I mean? <laughs> it doesn't it's have to be. Okay. Okay. Back off oh, shatter. It's just not me. I'm just not into it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's so hard to just be a person. Yeah, it is yeah, hard to yeah. be a person yeah. in Los Angeles, especially if you're in that entertainment field. Yeah, you know, it's so. true. You know, like I contemplated getting my nails done for this podcast, but I was like, I don't generally get my nails done anymore. So why do so it? Why switch I didn't, right. you know? Right. So it's like me trying to be authentic. Oh my God, I love it. You know? It's those little choices and moments. Yeah. All the, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. What do you think of Khalees? Khalees? Do you know Khalees? Oh, I do, I do. And she now has the farm. She has the farm yeah. now. Do, yeah. do, you, do you, yes? You, we you haven't. Like you guys doing, doing a... I, I do like what she's doing. I do like what she's doing, but the only the only criticism I have Ooh. is that a lot of her products are extremely expensive. Oh. And so one of the three things I'm doing with this is like making the prices very accessible. Mm. So I still want to make money, of course. Yeah. But like you're not going to. She had a cream that was like this t t smaller than this, half this size. 
with things, you know, I was like, oh, you know, cool, I do that. I was trying to connect with her. Cool, I grow some of my own stuff and make my own stuff. She's like, me too. And first of all, girl, that, there was kelp in that. You ain't growing no kelp. So oh. lie, number one. And number two, it was like $56 for oh. like four ounces of mm. something like that. That's mm. $18. Yeah. You know, and it's like, so that just is hard for me because, girl, you already got money, first mm -hmm. of all. <laughs> first of all. You're bleeding and people And secondly, dry. you know, like I just want... The, I think stuff that's net natural should be more accessible for people who right. need it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah. I do yeah. think it's cool what she's doing. I think it's awesome mm -hmm. that she's changing her life. But I also wonder sometimes if, like, she's trying to, like, get into this niche right. farming yeah. thing and then just still make a lot of money yeah. from it. Right. Which yeah. makes me a little bit sad because of I feel course. like, you know, if you have that much influence, you should use it to, like, do good things, you know? Because right. you can subsidize. Like, I get grants to subsidize costs so that I can still make money Mm. Mm. and the people are not paying me but it's like i'm getting you know mm -hmm. yeah. money elsewhere right. so like there are things you can do are you, right. you're doing your own grant writing and stuff too it, it that parallels lawyer claire sawyer lawyer. yeah yeah a little <laughs> bit i i'm not a, the best grant writer i should probably but hire you getting them grants. <laughs> you're getting those grants that's that's dope yeah man. i've I, gotten I, one so far but it was a good one so so wow. far <laughs> does your husband run the farm with you or he's separate so my husband kai yeah he works at the farm but as a carpenter mm. so he works with leah's husband actually jonah and i work with leah and so like they're like the site team where they mm. you know take care of all the buildings and me and leah farm and this year i'm doing less active farming because i have two kids mm -hmm. um but i'm managing our csa this year so we ship out free food to people in albany and troy um <laughs> and i do that yeah you're like a real person doing real things Yo, in the world. It's like you're a fully wild. activated <laughs> seed, like a lotus. Like, oh, you're coming up out of the murk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're kind like, of a wizard, too, at the same time. Like crazy. I mean, making things grow. I mean, yeah. really. Yeah. It's awesome. Like tapping into that witchy, yeah, perfect, you know? wonderful. Yeah, my husband calls me a witch sometimes. It's magic. Totally. But it's fun. Yeah. yeah. It's fun witch. Good witch. 100%. One time I was like, do I look like a witch, though? Because I don't want to really look like a witch, but. No, girl. What does a witch look like? What does a witch look like? You know what I mean? You're the new face for a witch, oh, girl. Yeah. No, it doesn't have to be no, just put on one our of grandmother's cool, witch. Cool hats like Tristan yeah. Mays yeah, does. In our grandmother's witch, okay? okay. <laughs> no. You re freaking revamp it, yeah. Do you still want to like act? Is there any part of you that would rejoin this whatever and also what do you see for the future of like your farm? Like what do yeah. you mm. are you growing towards or yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like I would, in the right circumstance, act again. Um, I do think, though, like, because I do, I do public speaking now, too, on, on mental health. And, like, I talk about my mental mm. health journey. And I think I'd more prefer to do that and be myself mm. rather than play another role. Uh, or if, you know, if I ever did get back into it, which I don't know if I got the clout for that anymore, but, you know, be able to choose my roles more mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. than I w was back then, you know, because then I was, I was just choosing roles just because I got booked. You know? Right. I, I right. wasn't like, you want me? So, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So maybe. Um, and then in terms of like the future, so I don't actually have my own farm yet, but, you know, I work with Soulfire right. Farm, but I do want to have my own farm mm. where I can grow my own herbs and mm. I can have people come and do tours and, you know, show them all the things we're doing, make products together and, Talk about herbalism and yeah. and I don't know where that's going to be yet, but I do I do want to have. You are arm. literally teaching the village to fish. Nobody's ever going to go hungry again. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh dope. my gosh. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty neat. It's, I, it's really wonderful. Like I'm, you're I'm consistently happy. paying it forward. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. Thanks. Yeah. Do you make any crops that are edible? Like edible crops? Do you like? Which ones do you like? Of the um, collard greens. Oh, collard greens are the best. Right? Yeah, love yeah. growing, love gro the brassicas, love growing brassicas. So mm -hmm. broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts. They're and really you like fun. the collards more than the turnips? That's a big thing. Yeah. In there. You, you you prefer the collards. Okay. Yeah. Turn up, turn up. I'm a, I'm a turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. Not for the turnips, And I like turnips. I like greens. the texture better of collards. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. The thought of like, <laughs> it's so weird because it's what food is, but we live in cities. So <laughs> the thought of pulling food <laughs> like greens out of the ground and being able to fucking eat them is so magical and yeah. seems so foreign. I'm like, right? what is that, that <laughs> mythical? Don't touch it, it's know. dirty. What yeah, is that? Don't touch it, it's dirty, oh no. It's, it's true, true it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. crazy. It's true. But that's all food. Was that real? I saw this go around TikTok recently and I think it was real and it really troubled me for the fucking world. It was like some American girl who was shocked that you can 
she didn't believe you could eat fruit off trees. Oh yeah, yeah. I think and it's I real. hope she was fucking kidding, but it didn't look like she was. I don't like, think so. She was. She was like, "Oh, don't you? But you can't eat that. It's off a tree." And the guy's like, "Yeah, that's where <laughs> fucking fruit comes from." She's like, "No, no, like it's off a tree. That's dirt. Like that's dirty." Basically. Oh yeah. wow, it's that's ridiculous. Wild. Like, oh, where ridiculous. do you think? Fruit comes from. It just proves we're so disconnected from our so food system. We are. Wow. Like, it's and crazy. from nature itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And we get kids like that. You know, like, we do, like, youth programs at the farm. Yeah. So, like, we have kids come up and they're like... <laughs> What, what you know, like, is that a, you know, and I'm, and I'm like, you can eat that, you know, what the yeah. hell is this? <laughs> and they're like, why is it, there's so much mud and like they're slipping around. It's, it's really funny. It's really funny. And then by the end of it, though, they're like, I love, you know, yeah, because it's our, soak it up. it's our earth, it's right? In us. It's, it's, in us. it's yeah. literally our earth, right? You like that? Yeah. One? Earth, right? Earth, right? Earth, right? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Got her right in her soul. <laughs> Favorite animal on the farm? Well, we only so have chickens and goats. Chickens and goats. So. All right, which one? <laughs> Probably the chickens. Oh, like chi what? goats are because aggressive. Goats, I grew up with yeah, goats. Yeah, that's why. Chasing me down the street. <laughs> Yeah. Goats are the worst. They they're are some weird they animals. They oh, fast. yeah, they're and faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> fast enough to catch me. Oh, then little Chonky Daniel. Little, little baby little little Chonky little Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> turkeys, turkeys are aggressive, too. Like, where I go, <laughs> yeah, they are. They, oh, are. Yeah, no. they are aggressive. They but the, the, the thought of a chicken and, flapping oh, its wings at me, I don't know why, scares me. Yeah, they're a bit, they're a bit intimidating. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a Pokemon. Like, yeah. The flap. flap. <laughs> they also seem like they, Ch they're mom, not trying flapping. to like smile at you in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they're the type who's like, let's keep it moving. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, cluck, cluck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello. Yeah, totally. Oh, man. Here. <laughs> like, yeah, they're Jesus. a bit odd. Their eyes right? are a little bit like, they look soulless <laughs> they just, almost. They're never going to totally be on your team and that's... <laughs> Scares me, <laughs> but I did hear recently of like a fox literally getting into like a chicken coop and like just they'll just, destroy them. Yeah. Oh, they do that. They like behead yeah. them, and yeah, yeah. it's pretty sad. Yeah. pretty sad. Have you had to clean out a dead dead chicken coop before? I once massacre? buried a chick, and we thought it was dead, and it came back to life. <laughs> The next day, and it crawled you? out of the ground. No, it just came back to life. Like it, it was dead, dead, dead. So yeah. it was just like. What is it called? Mm -hmm. Resurrected? Yeah. What, Lazarus? Yeah, no, no, no. yeah Lazarus. We named him Lazarus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's dope. That's dope. That's crazy. It was black, too. Oh, Ooh, it's in the soil. Exactly. In the soil. We, we had our friend, uh, another actress who's now a registered nurse, Jennifer Stone, on the podcast, mm -hmm. and she's told a story. She works in the ER oh, yeah. of that with a fucking human. Ooh, they coded him. They covered oh. him. He was dead, and then he sat up with the sheet oh. over him. Oh. <laughs> Nightmare. One of, the, one of the doctors wrote him off and everything. That's yeah, like they were literally God. filling out the certificate. Why Same. did that happen? That's like, so insane. Geez. I'll take That's them so back. Strange. <laughs> the certificate. You don't deserve it. I don't understand. I still gotta file it. Damn it. Damn. Oh, wow, that's intense. Wow. So, so Lazarus lived. He lived. Did yeah. you raise him and eat him? Uh, no, actually. God bless. Yeah. Do you that plan on eating them, or are you gonna let? So them? the chickens that we have at Soul Fire, we don't eat. Okay. Oh, okay. they're just eggs. To make eggs and yeah, to be ladies. around. Yep. Yeah. And so the males, cute. do you eat the males? Oh no. We used to have males. So this Lazarus was on the Northern California farm, but yeah. Soul Fire, we used to have meat birds. Now we don't. Mm. Um, but I have gone through the process of wow. Doing See, that. I, but even that's connected yeah. to what wait, wait, it is, like, though. Like, like, like killing like, a yeah, chicken, yeah, killing them, and 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 like bleeding, bleeding it, and, and, yeah, and, and, and deep, yeah, woo, all of that. Deep, I was about to say deflowering. <laughs> 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 How do you uh, think we get our chickens linked? <laughs> um, that's a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, killing it, the, fucking the it. Feathers, you know what I mean? Get the wings. Yeah, things. yeah, the wings. Yeah, I mean, the feathers. Uh, yeah. I think <laughs> our chickens get fucked. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's the only way to make it halal, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. The culture. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Um, but I will say, every time we did it, it was like it would rain that day. And then we would have a double rainbow the next day. Like, I oh. swear, it was pretty kind of crazy. Wow. A little seance yeah. is going on there. Yeah, it was <laughs> really crazy. There's some energy it's, around this farm. Yeah, and I, we would be like frolicking. It was, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you know. Have wow. you embraced uh, upstate New York winters being oh, an L.A. kid? God. Dude, what um, the fuck? Oh, no. Her first time was a winter. That, yeah. You moved there in winter. Yeah. That's so intense. You know, the first couple, I was like, it's so beautiful. You know, like, because I had never experienced snow like that. Right. Like, there's snow falling from the sky. Like, it just didn't, you know, my That's brain. That's serene. Right. You that? Yeah. And so the first couple times, I was like, this is amazing and beautiful. And now I hate it. 
Mm. I hate it. Like, it's hard, especially because, like, I have two kids now. So any time spent outside in the winter, I have to get them all bundled up. Oof. And then by the time we're, like, all bundled up, everyone's sweating and mad. And they're like, I don't want to go outside anymore. So it's just, yeah, oh. it's not. And then you just throw them into the yeah, snow. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh, I just want to, like. And yeah. then you have to, like, make the farm all ready for winter. Yeah, so we put it to bed at the end of the season. Like, literally kind of tuck it in with, oh. like, hay. And, right, because yeah. then it's got to yeah. sit yeah. there until things yeah. thaw. Yep. Till the ground thaws. And the thaw, the thaw has been getting later and later. Damn. Like last year or two years ago, we had a snowstorm on Cinco de Mayo. Holy Wait, shit. What? In yeah. May? Yeah. 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 Climate so, change. Yeah. But also we've had less snow this year because of climate change. So it's just cold and gray, which is also not. Yeah. That's why that's part of the reason right. why I'm here. You know? No, hey. we're we're so spoiled. <laughs> yeah. We're so, so, so spoiled in LA. Out of there. Oh, yeah. wait, were you here for the rain that just recently happened? No, but I no. heard about no. it. It was pretty crazy, right? Yeah. It would have been cute to you living yeah, in, cute, New York. Yeah, in New York. Yeah. New York, there's torrential downpour. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, like it's, yeah. We're cute in LA. We're the, like. <laughs> the one thing that I think is bad right. about it is that we have no concept of time passing. I agree. So like the yeah. seasons have no mm -hmm. impact on mm -hmm. us. I agree. And so changes exactly. in our personality can't really be a true, like we're all like, am I stupid? Am yeah. I crazy? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. dude, it's just like a change in the, and, but the I, atmosphere won't tell you that. I agree. Right. Like the seasonal change in LA is so, it happens, but it's just so subtle. It's yeah. such a yeah. subtle spectrum. Yeah. Whereas like if you live in a place with proper four seasons, totally. yeah, I feel like you can connect more to the changes yeah. of Absolutely. life. And be like, oh, okay. It's almost like this little mythology being played out in like my atmosphere right every like, year okay, every this season makes sense. yeah this is hard yeah yeah I, that's also part of the reason why i moved was because of that that monotonous mm -hmm. feeling like every day is the same yeah like, what yeah. am i doing but yeah now it's like you know winter comes it's time for rest yeah. you know you kind of hunker down you make plans you know right. it's like just a different and a different and, and you know you feel guilty for not having a smile on your face when it's always sunny like mm -hmm. you do, you literally don't feel like literally even the 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 Weather is giving you a chance yeah. to like, it's like you s fucking slap on that smile. It, <laughs> you get out there, <laughs> you, you shake and your tail over. feather. Okay. Man. Dude, it's yeah, true. Yeah. 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 That's fair. Perfectly yeah. sunny in LA and like, you're having a depressed morning. day. You're like, can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. nope. I actually wow. think we're, we're ready for our <laughs> oh, yeah, tip. Oh, yeah. We need a tip from you. Yes. We, yes, uh, yes, yes. we cinch up each episode with a nice little tippy tip. So, yeah, for for the audience. Yeah. On. Okay. If you. Are going through any struggle whether it's anxiety or feeling not good enough that all of the feelings themselves are valid mm. but what really matters is how we respond to the feelings mm. so you know for me when i get anxiety instead of being pissed and screaming and doing the things i used to do or running out and getting drunk or whatever it was that i did now i can have new tools so find your toolbox find your things that make you feel a little bit of joy. Maybe it's like a little gratitude that the sun is out today, especially in California. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, find those little things to help you change the reaction to the emotion because that's what matters. Lovely. I love that. Um, you got a tip, Lynn? Yes, I'm just gonna say, if you're finding that the majority of your self-care is purchased, mm -hmm. maybe investigate that. A lot of your self-care, at least the majority of it, should be free. You know what I mean? Um, or at least like an experience beyond, you know, going and getting something at Sephora or mm. something like a face mask. So I'm going to say uh, if you haven't connected to nature in a while, if you haven't been in nature in a while, um, do it, man. Get by a river. Go on a hike. Get out where it's like quiet where all you hear is birds and trees and like the natural world um our biology is intricately linked with nature and the natural world and the sun and being somewhere where there's not constant uh fucking electricity and wi-fi and whatever uh abstractions from nature so yeah go go camp if you haven't in a while, go get into nature. It's so good. And I'm saying this because I'm reminding myself I haven't been camping in fucking forever and I need to go. Yeah, but seriously, don't overestimate your ability to camp. Like, 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 if you have never camped before, work up to it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And go with a friend. It scares the shit out of me. Sometimes <laughs> camping, I'm going to be really honest with you. It kind of scares me. Really? So many That's bears fair. and shit. No, that makes sense. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You should be scared of it. I am very scared of camping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not. I camped my whole 20s yeah. in <laughs> the back alleys of LA. Okay? Uh, terrible. Yeah. 
Anyway, yeah. go yeah. on. But yeah. you're like an uh, an avid camper, so I mean, you yeah. you have like the I tools. love it out there. Yeah, yeah I love, love it out nice. there in the wilderness. And like you go by yourself. A couple. I've camped by myself a few times, and I've oh, yeah, loved me it. Too. Uh, but it's great. God bless. I've, I've loved it. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll do a little Ned's camping trip. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Wait, do you camp, Daniel? Uh, I grew up in camp. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Mississippi. Duh, you grew Yeah. <laughs> that was camp. Right. Uh, but no, I go every now and again. Every now right. and again. Um, yeah, my tip, uh, I will say, guys, life is all about cycles. Uh, get in touch with them. This is piggybacking off of your uh, statement there. Uh, don't be afraid of the seasons in life. Uh, and be aware that that cycle, you know, it'll continue to turn. And sometimes when you feel down, just know that there's a up right around the corner. So uh, just stay in the game. Guys. Yeah. For Usually every winter, for every winter, <laughs> there's a, there's a spring. Yes. Yeah. Um, Brooke Marie Bridges, so great Brooke to Marie. see. And you, then man. Hold, uh, plug Thank where you. we can find yes. you. Yes. So you can go to my website www.brooksbotanicals.co. Uh, and you yeah, can, we'll, we'll make sure to put it yeah. in the YouTube as Great. well. Like Brooks in the show Botanicals. Notes. Brooks Botanicals. You can check out. I have a bunch of really good, amazing, all natural skin, hair, and self care. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. body butter. It's called Simplicity Body it's Butter. Good. That's Smooth. what she gave us. So it feels creamy. freaking <laughs> incredible, yes. dude. Slather and you'll be supporting <laughs> a small local business. <laughs> yes. Black women farmers. That like, part. let's Somebody go, who's paying man. It forward, making more masters in the world. Yeah. Like, go. Ugh. Let's I love it. Go. Thank you. Uh, so thanks for important. making the world a better place, Brooke. Thank you yeah, for yeah. having me today. Uh, we'll, we'll see all you next week. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Uh, guys, shout out. is it time for <laughs> Super, Super Friends, Friends Dance? Thank you for being patrons. Thank we you. love you. Special shout out. Thanks for making this pa uh, th this podcast possible. Go to patreon.com slash nedspod if you want more from that us part. and to support us. We love you. Love Thank you. you. See you next week. Bye.